For this thermodynamics video, I'm joined by my TA Indiana because he's not a big fan of the Carnot heat pump. He doesn't like how perfect they are and that they don't include irreversibilities. So for this video, we're going to start with the Carnot heat pump and Indiana left before we would have gotten to his favorite part, but then I'm going to add isentropic efficiency to the turbine and the compressor and then I will recalculate the coefficient of performance once we account for some losses to irreversibilities in those two components. I'm Dr. Bernard, engineering professor. Entropy is usually the last subject you'll learn in the first semester thermodynamics course and entropy is a great bridge to the first topics that you would usually cover if you take a second semester of thermodynamics, which are going to be exergy, which looks at a conservation of energy, but tracks all of the energy that is wasted to friction. And then also the Rankine cycle, which starts off similar to a Carnot power cycle, but adds a lot of extra components and some extra realism that more closely resemble real world power plants. I'll start my analysis by looking at the schematic and adding some of the initial conditions. So at the entrance to the turbine, we're at 300 PSI and it's a saturated liquid. And at the entrance to the compressor, we're given that it's at 40 PSI and that we have a quality of 0.8. Since this is a Carnot heat pump, we know that the entrance to the evaporator is gonna be at the same pressure as the exit. And I'll make a small assumption for now that we can verify later, which is that the entrance to the condenser is gonna be at the same 300 PSI as the exit. And as long as point two is still a two-phase liquid vapor mixture, then this assumption will be true. So this drawing probably looks a little bit different than most of the power plants we look at, which are usually power cycles. They normally have the turbine on the right side, and normally the evaporator is at the top leading into the turbine, and the condenser is at the outlet of the turbine. And that's because we usually think of the warm region as heating up the working fluid for the power plant cycle, and the cold region as being the waste heat. But for a heat pump, the compressor is actually raising the working fluid to a higher pressure so that its temperature is actually above the heat source so that heat is gonna go from the working fluid to the hot source. And then at the exit of the turbine, the pressure is gonna be low enough that the temperature of the working fluid is gonna be even lower than the cold source, allowing heat to go from the cold source to the working fluid. And so with the information we have so far, I'm able to draw the shown TS plot. I've labeled point one as the inlet to the compressor, I notice that I put an S after points two and four. This blue rectangle is the main Carnot heat pump. Points one to two S and points three to four S are the isentropic steps. The dashed lines in red from one to two and from three to four are then what we'll get to later in the problem once we add isentropic efficiencies for the compressor and the turbine. But the first thing we wanna solve for is the coefficient of performance for this Carnot heat pump before we take into account efficiencies. And to do that, we're gonna need temperatures. So it's back to the steam tables. In my textbook, the ammonia steam tables for English units are table A-14E. And I'll start off by grabbing information for the low pressure side, 40 PSI. We're gonna need the temperature, 11.65 degrees. We're gonna need enthalpies, 55.07 and 614.76. We'll also need entropies, both the fluid and saturated gas. And scrolling down to 300 PSI, the very bottom row, we'll need the temperature of 123.2 and also the saturated fluid and gas enthalpies and entropies. We're gonna use temperature in order to find the coefficient performance for the ideal heat pump. Enthalpies are gonna be used to find the coefficient of performance of the actual heat pump. And those entropies are gonna be used to find some of the enthalpies that we can't get on their own, points two and points four, the outlet of the compressor and outlet of the turbine. After adding temperatures to the TS plot, we can now get the coefficient of performance for the ideal Carnot heat pump. And we see that works out to be 5.22. The most common mistake I would expect to see on this part of the problem is forgetting to convert the numerator to Rankine. Whenever you're doing division with temperatures, you must be in Kelvin or Rankine, not Fahrenheit or Celsius. Now it may seem at a glance that I broke my own rule with the denominator because I left those in Fahrenheit, but a change in temperature actually can stay Fahrenheit or Celsius because one degree Fahrenheit is the same size as one degree Rankine. So the change in temperature can stay as Fahrenheit or Celsius. So back to the other final answer we're looking for, coefficient of performance after taking into account isentropic efficiencies for the compressor and turbine. 
we're going to need to find all of the enthalpies, H1 through 4. So we're going to start off by finding the Carnot enthalpies, points 1, 2s, 3, and 4s. And then after that, we'll use the isentropic efficiencies to find enthalpies of points 2 and 4. So first off, I'm just keeping myself organized by writing down all of those numbers that I found in the steam tables just a minute ago. And then I'm going to start at point 3, because that's the easiest one. Since it's a saturated liquid, I get enthalpy and entropy as just the saturated liquid value from the table. In order to find enthalpy at point 4s, we're going to have to use the enthalpy at point 3. Because 3 to 4s is an isentropic process, point 3 has the same enthalpy as point 4. So the right-hand side of this fraction is the quality of point 4s. And the left-hand side then is also quality, but in terms of enthalpy. So a little calculator work and we can get the value for H4s. For point 1, we can get enthalpy and entropy using the 0.8 quality at point 1 that we were given in the initial problem statement. And the equation that I have written here is the quality equation from back in chapter 3 where this is just HF plus quality times the quantity of HG minus HF. And then lastly, for enthalpy at point 2s, we're going to repeat the same process as we found for H4s, which means we're going to use the fact that point 1 to point 2s is an isentropic process, that we'll use the same enthalpy from point 1 at point 2s. And so this right-hand fraction represents the quality at point 2s in terms of entropy, and so the left-hand side would also be quality, but in terms of enthalpy, which is why the left-hand side is our H2S uh, minus H of the fluid over HG minus HF. And this gives us the four enthalpy values for the Carnot heat pump. And now I've given myself a fresh page and written down the isentropic efficiency equations for the turbine on the left and the compressor on the right. Now at first these are going to look a little strange because on the turbine equation the S term is in the denominator and on the compressor equation the S term is in the numerator. And this has to do with how turbines and compressors function. For a turbine the maximum possible performance is when there are no irreversibilities and then once irreversibilities are added the work decreases. In order for efficiency to be a number less than one the larger work value, which is the maximum work, would then have to be in the denominator. So that's why the S term is in the denominator for the turbine. That's the maximum possible work. And then the smaller amount of actual work will be the numerator. And then the fraction will be a quantity between 0 and 1. Now this is different for pumps and compressors. For pumps and compressors, the maximum possible performance uses the least amount of energy. So an actual pump or compressor will use more than this minimum amount. And so in order to create an efficiency equation, which is a fraction between 0 and 1, the larger number has to be in the denominator. And so the actual energy required to power the pump is in the denominator and the ideal perfect isentropic amount is going to be the numerator. So that's why for compressors and pumps, the S term is going to be in the numerator. After filling in all the enthalpies for values that I found on the previous page, I'm able to solve and get enthalpy at points 2 and 4. Then using the TS plot and points 2S and 4S, I can verify that these points actually make sense. Because on the plot, point 2 is to the right of point 2S and point 4 is to the right of point 4S, which they have to be. Every real world process with irreversibilities is going to lead to an increase in entropy. So these red dashed lines will always go to the right, no matter whether they're slanting up and to the right or down and to the right, they will always slant to the right. And so it's good to double check that H4 of 169.67 is greater than H4S 168.23 and H2 606.8 is greater than H2S 596.4, which means that these numbers do make sense and that we didn't make any obvious sign errors. And so the last step is to plug in all these enthalpies into the coefficient performance equation, which is going to be heat output to the hot source divided by the network input. So personally, for sign convention, I prefer to organize my enthalpy so that all of these terms will end up being positive. Uh, but I know some people choose to reverse them and always do final minus initial, in which case you'll end up with a bunch of negative numbers. But if the numerator and denominator are both negative, the negative signs will all cancel out anyway and we'll all get a positive value for coefficient of performance which in this case works out to be 4.66 and comparing that to the 5.22 that we found before it's good that we got an answer that is less once we include isentropic efficiency and the turbine and compressor are no longer performing at their maximum level it makes sense that coefficient performance should decrease a little bit and since the isentropic efficiencies were both 90 percent which is pretty good we wouldn't expect performance to drop that much so this decrease of around 10 percent does also seem to make sense 
It doesn't have to drop exactly 10% just because our isentropic efficiencies were 90%, but as a general rule of thumb, a small decrease in efficiency should only result in a small decrease in performance, which is what we see. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, consider subscribing to my channel so you can see each new video as they come out. And if you just want to watch another thermodynamics video right now, you can click on some of the links that are up on the screen. Thanks for watching and enjoy the rest of your day.